What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are doing a rebuild of the Denver Broncos. I know we kind of did one recently enough, but I don't think we had the Broncos going for as many wide receivers as they did and uh, their draft was pretty decent and ultimately this is also a team that I've been thinking about using for our Madden 21 franchise. You know, we usually have two franchises, one online, one not. Uh, for the online one, I don't know if we're going to have much of a decision as we normally would. We might go randomizer. So as long as I get a team that isn't uh, super good or one we've already done, that one might not be in our, our decision making. So let me know. I mean, we're getting kind of to that point, you know, depending on if there's any delays for the, you know, deals covid or not, uh, yeah, and I said it that way, because I'm, I'm, I'm educated now, it's, it, I, you know, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, this could be one of our teams, along with teams like the Cardinals, uh, you know, we already did the Buccaneers for that one season, it was a Super Bowl season anyways, uh, we also gave Jerry Judy a superstar development, I think that is very fair for him, uh, KJ Hamler, because we gave Jerry Judy superstar, I'm going to give him normal. We've seen a lot of second-round wide receivers in the past get normal developments. Will he be normal? I don't know. This is what the rest of the team looks like. Hopefully, I'm not missing anyone. Uh, the old right guard, my guy, 70 overall, probably should be star or better, but we're not going to touch it. We're just going to leave it. Uh, just like you should not leave this video until you like and subscribe, huh? Huh? I'd give it like a 4.5. 5 out of 10 on the sellout rating. No, the sellout rating, not 10 out of 10, obviously. But, like, reasonable expectation rating? I don't know. Andrew Luck, don't forget. Don't worry. We're not going to forget. Uh, we're going to leave Antonio Brown here because there's a chance he can maybe come back. Andrew Luck, though, if he were to come back, wouldn't be for at least another season or two. So... I'm going to uh, I'm gonna call this time of death on his career for the moment. Yeah, like I said, let me know in the comment section below maybe what team you'd like to see. Uh, try not to mention one of the teams that we already did recently. Like the Chargers, Falcons, Titans, their uh, Cowboys. Zero chance we are any of those teams. So, you know, unfortunately, if you're one of those fans, it's already happened. Okay, it's already happened. Why is Tyree Cleveland 27? Huh? And why didn't the Packers draft him? That's a real damn question. But yeah, if I had to say what teams are on my highest of list right now is Broncos, Cardinals, um, maybe the Bengals, just because that's a real tough team to rebuild at this point. Uh, I don't know. Redskins, perhaps. That would be a fun one. Giants, maybe. One, you know, one of the lower teams for the most part. Try to be a new division, though. So the Cardinals, that's, that's the one that's kind of like, we've already been in that division a few times this year already. I don't know. I don't know. We trade Jeff Huberman to the Packers for a six-round pick. They have way too many tight ends on this roster. Way too many. So we have some re-signings. Justin Simmons is one we can easily get out of the way with a nice five-year, 50-something million dollar deal. Offer is perfect. Glad he thought it was perfect because I would have been willing to give more. Oh, here's a big one. We have we failed about four or five breakouts this season, including a guy like Noah Fant, but we get Bradley Chubb to Superstar, which is bigger than any of the ones that we missed by far. Going to the playoffs, here we are. Are we in them? We are not. We go 6-10. and 10. I don't know where that ranks, but maybe a top 10 pick here coming in with the Trevor Lawrence draft. I don't think there's a possibility we get up to t Trevor Lawrence. Drew Locke still on that cusp. We'll see how he played. But still on the cusp of can you, is he the franchise? Is he not? Right here, it's leaning towards not. 3,400 yards, 17 touchdowns, 10 picks. The rushing game wasn't great at all. Something is off with this team. Cortland Sutton, though, 1,000 yards, 5 touchdowns. Jerry Judy with a super disappointing season. Uh, KJ Hamler and Noah Fan with a meh. And, uh, you know, a couple of backups. Garrett Bowles will need to be replaced ASAP. Uh, I don't like the fact that he gave up that many sacks. Chubb, uh, eight sacks. Not a lot himself. Same with Vaughn. The team just really underperformed. The talent is a, it's there more than they've played. Pretty much every single player on the team outside of Cortland Sutton and maybe some of the linemen were very bad. Yearly awards, any sort of win at all would be really nice. And I don't think we'll have a win. Uh, yeah, and I don't. I don't see us winning anything. I mean, we were pretty bad across the entire board, really. Trying to think of who would have maybe gotten a dev up from that season. Maybe Cortland, but at the end of the day, best case scenario, he goes to X Factor. It doesn't really do a whole lot for us. Chargers do apparently win the Super Bowl over the Falcons. Interesting one. 
I can allow the the, the Chargers making the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I could see both teams making the Super Bowl. It, I wouldn't put money, though, on the Falcons making the Super Bowl this year. But the Chargers, I mean, they had the team in plays last year. They just didn't play well. Uh, any other dev ups? Ooh, that could be kind of big. We did get a dev up for Mr. Bryce Callahan, uh, who is now 28 years old. Perfect slot receiver, so, or receiver, slot corner. Definitely going to be looking at cornerback decently high, but there's a lot of other needs. Middle linebacker, left end, DT. I mean, pretty much the entire interior of the line. You know, Jarrell Casey's 30 years old. Uh, Kareem Jackson didn't really go down as much as I thought he would have. He went down three overalls, which isn't bad at the age of 32, normal development. Anthony Johnson, uh, Anthony Alexander Johnson, 28 years old, and he's only played that little bit of years in the league. Interesting. Uh, there's, I mean, the team looks in like it's in a good spot, but there are a lot of positions we need to replace. You know, right guard's not a guaranteed lock. Of course, we'll hold him there for a while, but is he going to be the future there? I don't know. Jawan James, he's getting old. Garrett Bowles, he's already getting old, 28 years old. And uh, he didn't really play well, so maybe try to trade him off for like a fifth-round pick, sixth-round pick, perhaps. Maybe replace him in free agency. I don't know, but the one thing I think we're all right on is probably receiver. Running back, not super great because, you know, those guys are getting old too. They started off, well, uh, Philip Lindsay started off kind of old in his career. I think we can get rid of all these guys. We'll re-sign Rippin. I always thought it was Ripkin, but guess not. I don't freaking know, dude. Who cares? But where is all the money? We have to have some old players or guys that we can get rid of soon that are making a ton, right? So Kareem is one of those players. How uh, how? Okay, we can't we can't release him anytime soon. Casey, I'm fine with Jawan James. That's a lock in. Uh, Callahan, that's fine. Chubb, that's fine. Boye, I guess that's fine. We could maybe get rid of Todd Davis here. Todd Davis would be saving us a little bit of money to get rid of him, but we'll wait out. Make sure that we actually have the money to do so. Uh, Gary Bowles is a definite lock for trade. Let's also fix Jerry Judy's contract. I might at one point fix all these contracts, but we'll we'll see. It's going to take a long time. I want to get all the devs and contracts ready, but I don't know if you can actually change the dev of rosters unless you're actually in it, which is kind of stupid, but I think that's the way it is. McManus, if we can actually release him now, damn, I'd like to replace him because he... He was pretty bad, and we've had a lot of bad seasons with McManus over the years. Not in real life, but you know what I mean, like in in Sim. I mean, what? what's that? Uh, Mr. Eric Armstead, is he actually a, a piece that's available? Pretty sure the Niners re-signed him. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think he's available. We got a new kicker, Dustin Hopkins, and Daryl Worley as a backup corner. All right, so now we have pick number eight, and there are a couple of linemen up here. I do don't know if we should be trading up for alignment. I completely forgot to put him on the list. But Sewell is really good. And I don't want to lose him. But I also don't want to pay... I don't want to trade up for a guy when I could just go for one of the guards and maybe you know move him over. I don't even know. But there's also a potential to trade down. And we already have the freaking whole day to reorder glitch. Uh, wide receiver number one for the Panthers, which is debatable. Sewell number two. Trevor Lawrence is still there with the Jets. Ah, okay, let's, let's, mm. we're going to have to take a look. I'm surprised no one traded up, which is, like, they have Darnold. Let's see how good Darnold played, or well, I suppose, words. 4,100, so he, Darnold did have a really good improvement on a season. Same picks, barely more touchdowns, but a lot more yards because he actually played. I think it'd be a 50-50 on this one. I don't know. I feel like the main thing I feel is that someone would have traded up by now for um, for Lawrence. So even though he's here, I think we're going to have to just accept the fact that no matter what happens, whether a team, number one pick is a team that has a really good quarterback or not, Trevor Lawrence is going number one or number two. There's no chance he falls to four in any situation ever. So we're going to have to accept the fact that at number four, there's zero chance Trevor Lawrence would be here. So the realistic move is to let him go, and the Jets are the ones that get him. We still do have an option. Oh, Patrick Certain. I would have loved to see him there at number eight. We do have a chance at field still. The question is, do we want him? Um, Locke was okay. But I don't, uh, I don't know, man. I, I really don't. Justin Fields, uh, pretty solid QB. Another guy. Nah, this is another situation where Justin Fields, 
I don't think falls past five in real life. You know, maybe two or three realistically, but five at the very latest. So if we're going to be realistic about it, Justin Fields has to go top three, top five. No chance he's at eight. So I think we're either going to take one of our guys lower on the list here or we're going to... Actually, to be fair, Mathis could be pretty high here. DT. We do have multiple DTs in other rounds, though. And middle linebacker, I think, is probably our biggest need. So I think we should trade to 14. Maybe gain a third round next year for it. Maybe get a third and a fourth for 14. Uh, with 14, of course. I think that'd be fair. Okay, so this is a super fair trade that they don't want, apparently. Okay. All right, so it was a multi-trade situation, but we ended up trading, long story short, number eight and number 80 for pick 72, 65, their fourth round pick, and 14. So long story short, we switched. Uh, this has been a long story. It's not short at all. We swapped our third for a closer third. We got their earliest third, their earliest fourth, in 14 to move down six spots, which obviously puts them in the top 10. Completely fair trade. I think in real life, they might have even had to give it maybe instead of a second round, a third round, they would have had to get rid of their second. I don't know. We're just going to go best available. Screw it. Micah Parsons is our new middle linebacker. 71 overall hidden. Number two middle linebacker, realistically. He said we reached, but I don't think that's true in the slightest. And he's hidden. So good pick for us. Um, I think we're going to move to like 20. Cade Mays goes to the Vikings. A really good pick there. Paulson Abdebo to the Steelers. Some really good picks here. Debate not going to like 20. Walker Little goes there. Uh, let's take a look. Who needs corner? The Patriots could use corner, ironically. Damn it. We give the Ravens 40, 78 in Jewel for 20. We're also going to add a high fourth round pick onto that. I think overall, actually, we should have probably taken a look at uh, the calculator for that. So Jewel would have had to be worth a late fourth or an early fifth, which I think is fair because he's 25. He's decent. So a very fair, fair trade there. Of course, we do not have a second round pick anymore, so we have to make this count. Snowden could be a replacement for Vaughn, but I don't think we're going to be worrying about that for at least another three years. So I think we're fine with that. Do have a couple of running backs, uh, which, you know, it's it's on the, the thought process. Molden would be an immediate replacement for Boye after this season, I'd say. But he would be sitting for a season as well. The thing is, we have a lot of cornerbacks on our list. Same with DTs later. Well, maybe not <clears throat> a lot of DTs later, but we have a couple of DTs later. Um, I'm having a tough time with this one because Molden, I think, is great. Bobby Brown is really good, too. We need two DTs rather than one corner. Bobby is a tough guy to pass on. Yeah, we need uh, we need multiple DT. So we're going to go with Bobby Brown here. 73 overall, hidden, uh, an immediate starter on this team. And the third round should still be pretty solid. Should still be able to get a, uh, a corner or two. Yeah, I think we made the right choice. I like Molden a lot, but I think we made the right choice. So Damari Mathis, a little bit worse version of Molden, but a little more athletic. So we're going to take him here. 73 overall. I do not remember him being a 73 overall. That is a great pick then. I was thinking maybe 68, 69, but never mind. Going to go to pick eight in the third round. I think we could probably trade this down. Of course, we are risking Mr. Jack Anderson, but I think it's worthy, worthy to move down a little bit. Gain maybe an extra fifth round next year or something to move to late third. Now we're in the high fourth here. Brady Breeze could be a future replacement for our strong safety spot. We do also have Matt Hankins early six. So I think we're actually going to take a little bit of a reach here. We're going to take Brady Breeze as our future backup strong safety. I know the uh, this class is getting a little boring because we kind of know some of the devs now. But I don't know. Let me know if you guys want me to use a different class. If you have a good one you could suggest. Or uh, you just want me to do random classes rather than doing the real life ones. Uh, and here, Antonio Phillips, I do not remember if he's good or not. Oh, well, we're going to go with our uh, our future kicker now, potentially, Jake Verity. And then in the seventh round, we're going to go with our punter, I think. Ooh, we have another pick here. We have two picks in a row. We're trading these down for a fifth round. Absolutely. Turns out we didn't have a uh, a seventh round, so we had to make a trade there, but that's fine. We, we got the job done. Now we're going to go with Max Duffy, 73 overall. I don't think he's that old, but I can't remember. He might be. I think someone said something about him being foreign, perhaps. So, whatever. Either way, I like him. He's an Australian's guy. Did I say Australians, by the way? 
All right, so Micah Parsons, our number one pick, only a 71 overall, but a number one, well, number two starter, and he's superstar. Okay, I don't know what um, Dylan is, and I don't remember going for DTs too often, so I'm not going to look at him, but I would assume Dylan's got to be superstar better than if if our fellow Micah Parsons here is uh, superstar. Star for him, star for him. I mean, we kind of know a lot of these guys, so star, superstar here, everyone else, star. I don't know about Duffy, though. He might actually be superstar because he is on the older side, so maybe... I don't know, maybe. No. Either way, really good picks for sure. Let's take a look at where... I mean, Fields might have been in like the third round because of just the game being the way it is. But yeah, I don't want to look at any other devs other than the guys, obviously, we already know. But yeah, you can't get wrong. You know, can't be wrong with that draft. I think we addressed a lot of things. I wish you would address offensive line, but at the end of the day, it just didn't... The pieces didn't fall into place the way we needed them to. And, I mean, at the end of the day, like we said, we do have a starting offensive lineman group. All right, so headed for season two of the rookies. Uh, offense doesn't look a whole lot different. Looks a little bit better on the uh, quarterback position, though. Drew Locke didn't play super well, but he has progressed a decent bit. You know, he's in the mid-80s, so I think not trying to trade up was probably the right choice for this situation uh, and then looking at the offensive line I do think we probably neglected it a bit too much offensive line and free agency wasn't looking too hot the picks just weren't right in uh, the draft for us I don't think I think uh, maybe we could have stayed at eight and grabbed a lineman but we also were able to grab that nice middle linebacker Parsons who's probably going to be the starter coming up pretty soon for the long haul and then defensive line we wouldn't have gotten a guy like Bobby Brown if we didn't trade down so Call it what you want. We got a little more depth, I think, overall. And I th I think we made the right call. I think offensive line, it'll, it'll be there. I still think we have just good enough a line right now uh, to, to hold up. I think we chose close to the best available for and eh, we, ch we chose for need but we we just completely skipped on alignment basically we have some negotiations and one of them is philip Lindsay. i have no idea where to peg his our decision for him on the team 85 overall you know five mil per year what is that six mil per year that's not terrible he's pretty damn good um yeah we'll resign him that's 31 is kind of rough maybe we'll get a dev up i don't know uh alexander johnson I'd like to give him a two-year if he'd be willing to take that rather than a, a three, but you know, let's offer him a little bit more money as well. I mean, that's fair, right? Come on. All right, head to the playoffs. If we win, I think we might be in. And we did win. We went eight and eight. We barely made the playoffs. Let's take a look at our season. So we won the first three, lost four in a row, won one. So we went uh, four and four. Then we went four and six. And then we went seven and six. Seven and eight, and then eight and eight. Last second win over the Panthers. Let's take a look at uh, Drew Locke's season. And that's an improvement. So I'm glad we gave him the next year because over 4,000 yards, 33 touchdowns, and eight picks. Looking pretty good. Uh, Philip Lindsay was meh, but we gave him the contract already. So <laughs> he's on the team. He's, there's nothing else to it. Jerry Judy with a huge. Uh, I was going to say glow up, but that would just... Uh, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Uh, Hamler, meh. No offense, meh. But Sutton and Judy, really good seasons. Blocking, okay, I guess. Jawan James, really good season. Center and right guard were all right. Uh, tackles, Parsons might go to an X factor already. Sack totals, we had Bobby Brown with the most. But overall, sack totals are just trash. I don't know what's wrong with this game, but... Apparently, Chubb had a half a sack on 934 downs. I don't understand. I really don't. I don't get it. And then pick totals were meh. They were all right. Kicking. McManus with a huge upgrade in the season. So he might actually get that re-signing. We'll see. Uh, maybe if there's some sort of really bad playoff performance, maybe we don't re-sign him. I don't know. But overall, he's primed to be re-signed. So there's that. Uh, looking at... The awards for the NFL, did we get anything, perhaps, maybe some sort of rookie award? No for offense. Defense, Micah Parsons, I did expect that because he uh, had a lot of tackles, decent sacks. You know, he was quite involved. And overall, I will take in a win, a win for Micah Parsons, even though he was the number two guy. I don't understand how he did actually do so well. But 
not bad. Not a bad season. And even though we barely made the playoffs, we've been over this before. You just got to make it. After that, anyone can win. You know, anything can happen. So I suppose let's use our upgrades and get into the game. We're an 83 overall. They're a 78 overall. We also do know they were the team that drafted Trevor Lawrence. And I would imagine him starting as like an 80 plus overall superstar X Factor is probably going to mean that he's at least an 88 overall by now. So, you know, Drew Locke, don't worry about it. You just got to go against just uh, a guy that's already better than you by quite a bit. But I will say the team, even though they are only 8-8, eight eight, did have a pretty decent improvement. They have Jamar Watson as well. Jeez, the Jets Jets took some players and oh no. Uh, okay, a little bit of weather. I don't know how that's going to affect Locke, but we should have a better run game than them. I know they have Bell, but we have two good bags rather than their one. But here we are. Uh, Jets start off with a touchdown. We do not answer back with a touchdown. Second quarter, 10-3, to 10-10. That is a huge field goal right before half, but it's a close game. 13 all now to start the fourth. It will be very 50-50 ball. I do not like being down by seven, and just like that, the offense choked it away. The defense did a pretty damn good job. It's just, you know, offense couldn't really score. They get points there, but, I mean, too little, too late, really. Seven-yard rush, and that's a first down. Uh, oh, here's a chance, though. The clock with 30 seconds left. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the sliders aren't on easy, so why not let us do it? Oh, all white? Great. I can I can totally see what's going on. I can I can see everything. Hamler. Hamler with a great play, however, with the clock running. This is going to probably be a last second play. Okay, Hamler, I get it. I get it. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, everyone uh, hurry up to the line here. Sutton might be the, the look. Well, they will leave him one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, no. Don't tell me. It's a perfect throw. The safety misses. Oh, uh, God. I definitely uh, I definitely changed the outcome of this one. I'm just going to throw that out there. It's not like it was, you know, a blown coverage by uh, this guy. May was in position. He had to do what he had to do. In this spot, he had nowhere really to go. He just kept backing up. He was kind of over to the inside, and I'm over-explaining something for no reason at all. But here we are with, uh, unless they missed the extra point, an overtime came in the playoffs, and that's going to be a punt, but it's all the way to the one. But it won't matter, apparently, because they score like a 70-yard touchdown. Forget anything I said. All that in-depth bullcrap means nothing. Because apparently they scored for 70, like we said. Drew Locke played a pretty damn good game. It's just ultimately the offense just didn't get it done. Offense was pretty poor all game long. Finally showed up in the late portion of the game. Defense was pretty consistent. It's just, you know, you can't really do much as a defense when your offense is just not doing well. Of course, it was a 73-yard rushing touchdown by Bell. Makes sense. But hey, at 8-8, eight and eight, we did, you know, we put up a show. We put up a fight. Even though the Jets weren't nearly as good as us, and they still won. And Trevor Lawrence was worse than Drew Locke in that game. Uh, I can't remember. Drew Locke was pretty decent. Maybe good enough to go to Superstar. We'll see. It will be the Saints versus... Who the hell was it, actually? I completely just forgot. Saints versus Browns in the Super Bowl. I believe we also were nominated as a head coach. Has the head coach for the uh, AFC side of the Pro Bowl. And the winner of this, even though the sim is taking months long, is the Browns 59-15. to That's some sort of score you got there. Uh, developments, Jerry, Judy, and Sutton do go up to X-Factor, while Drew Locke, surprisingly, a little, a little surprisingly, stays at star development. But, of course, we have two number one wide receivers, which is definitely not a problem at all. Drew Locke, he's still pretty damn good. He's an 83 overall with, you know, mid-80s in the throwing stats. Almost 90 for medium. Parsons does go up to X-Factor like we suspected. Lots of dev-ups here. Uh, I don't think there was another dev-up outside of that, though. Does Kareem Hunt need a con- uh, Kareem Hunt. Kareem Jackson need a contract? Because he's still here. I'm, I'm really shocked that he didn't drop down at all. Uh, AJ Boye didn't really drop at all either, unless he went up in the season and then just dropped there. Still starting caliber, which is nice. Uh, defensive line, no no issues there. You know, Jarrell Casey looks like he's fine. I don't even know if he dropped at all. 
He dropped two block shed and excel. That's, I mean, that's near nothing when you think about it. I mean, it looks good to me. I mean, we lost a little bit on Vaughn, but overall, we didn't really get worse, and we gained some devs, so... Okay, I can I can live with that. McManus, he did play pretty damn well. We'll give him a two-year extension. I think I think that's pretty fair. Happy to re-sign Jake Butts. Michael Oje Mudia. I'm sorry, pal. I'm gonna have to let you go. And I'm debating on what we do with Kareem Jackson because that is quite a bit of money. It's not the worst situation. Let's see if we can get rid of Kareem. First things first, though, is there anyone here that we need to get rid of Kareem for? <laughs> for Kareem, apparently. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, we have seen many times, and we haven't really gone for him much lately. Buda Baker, Sherman 88 overall. Uh, Chidobia Woozie, we've had him a few times. That sounds weird. Justin Herbert, apparently, as an 85 overall, was let go to free agency. All right, so we uh, we splash a little bit of cash, and we went for Jatavis Brown to be our new number two middle linebacker. Nice three-year, 18.5 mil deal. And Marshawn Lattimore, who is a five-year, $70 million deal. However, A.J. Boye probably looking to be on his last season with us. So, with that being said, I think that's fine. You know, we'll replace A.J. Boye's contract with a slightly heftier one in uh, Marshawn Lattimore. But I'd say Lattimore 1, Boye 2, Bryce Callahan 3, and Mathis has to wait just a little bit longer. Not too much longer Though, as uh, even Callahan's not, I guess maybe for a few more seasons, but Mathis will be here for the long haul, don't worry. All right, so the Seahawks having a 71 overall as their starting strong safety. They trade for Kareem Jackson from us for a six-round pick. It's not really about the pick for us, it's about saving the cap space, which he did carry quite a number, I must say. So overall, uh, I mean, a good move. All right, so we have the draft. I think tackle is going to be our number one choice. Uh, number one player in the league when it's cornerback. Interesting. I suppose if you have that guy, a lockdown corner really can make that much of a difference. Imagine you can get prime Darrell Revis or just any prime, like prime champ, prime any of the Hall of Fame corners. Assuming Revis. Is Revis a Hall of Famer? I mean, I, uh, I'd put him up there with anyone in their prime on like trying to cover anyone really great. But would you, longevity-wise, statistically-wise, say he's Hall of Fame worthy? I don't know. Uh, I don't want to go any further than this because I think our tackle is going to be gone. So I will move up with the Rams here. Four picks isn't that much. So maybe a third-round pick. Do we have any extras? Two-fourths? Two-fourths and 122? I, I think maybe. Let's see. All right. Uh, 118, 22, and Shelby Harris will add a fifth round to that instead of a fourth. I think it's a little more fair this way. Carothers, and of course, now this corner is high on my list. Great stuff. Love it. So these would be the three picks as of right now that I would like. Hunter Howie, not a bad center. Carothers, who just looks insane. And then Nate Tanner, who I don't know why I have on my, on my list. I guess to be fair, we don't really need a corner, so that's probably why. But I guess Joseph is clear-cut the number one need. And he's uh, potentially the best out of all those players. 76 overall, really good speed. Play him where you want. Of course, I think we will play him at tackle. I think that's a good decision. Right, so you do have an, a quarterback, Joey Anthony. I would like to have him as a backup uh, just in case we do decide to move on from uh, what's-his-face. Xavier Leslie, I ran out of points, but you can see here he's uh, he's got very good combine grades, so... It's a risk, but I'd be willing to maybe take it. Same with this guy. Ran out of points. Saw the safeties. Uh, I forgot the strong uh, the safeties in general. So, uh, unfortunately, if we go for these guys, we're going to have to just take a guess on them. We're going to trade the young Malik Reed, 54 and 123, to move up 12 spots, which I believe we will use to take the QB, right? We do have Xavier Leslie, like we said, but uh, that's the thing. Do we believe? Well, how how good was uh, Locke? Was he good enough to lock up the spot? Am I right? So completion percentage was still kind of low, but he did take less sacks. He had less picks, a lot more touchdowns, and he did put up a lot more yards with over 100 passer rating on the season, which is definitely a great season. Do we even need the safety, though? How old is Leslie? 21 as well. Ah, oh, this is tough. I like both of them. Now we're going to go Leslie. Okay, thankfully he was hidden, but 
I do not know if he's better than Breeze, because Breeze is a little bit higher of an overall, and he's he's played already. So we do have the right guard, who is a 6.1, early 5th. Looks pretty good, and he seems to be the brother of our right tackle. And he seems to be a bad draft pick. Yikes. So we trade to the Browns, get a third next, and of course they get a 71 overall free safety. Everyone in the league is pissed at us. And I will almost guarantee any other players we had on the board are definitely gone. I am shocked to see this guy here. I'm not going to lie. Daryl Gross, Gross, whatever his name is. And he's a bit of a steal. 68 overall hidden. Uh, okay ratings. The finesse run blocking is not looking hot. But decent bit of ability with the speed as well. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Uh, Brian Richardson, the guy probably should have been scouted. 6.0, though. Fast. We'll take him. Whatever. <laughs> okay, dude. 53 overall hidden, and I got really loud there. The problem with him is he's 23. This is the first time we've ever done something like this. Like, I remember we had a wide receiver one time that was hidden a little overall, but I've never had a QB, especially a guy that's, like, kind of fast with hidden. I mean, unless this guy's superstar or better... There's really not much you can do with him anyways, and we wouldn't start him at all, but maybe just thinking of maybe a user league. But who knows, with high overall, maybe uh, potentially developable? I don't know. I guess taking random players pays off every time, every once in a while. We're going to take a random punter, Mr. Seth Dunsmore, and by random I mean the best available punter, but still kind of random. And then 22, we might just take another random draft pick. Okay, never mind, we're not going to because we're going to take Mr. Irrelevant. Shout out to Mr. Irrelevant, probably going to be a fullback. Um, I think it's pretty obvious. This guy looks ridiculous. And they, okay, see you later. Uh, when's the last time there was a good Mr. Irrelevant? Because I think we've just made history, folks. I think we just made history. When's the last time a Mr. Irrelevant pick? Ooh, I really wish that was Superstar, but still, it's a good pick. When's the last time a Mr. Irrelevant player was a guy that's going to be in the league for the rest of his career. And by the rest of his career, I mean a good career. Super started well. Un unfortunately, Mr. Brady Breeze, you are not the father of the strong safety position. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. We had three more hiddens. Yes, three more. Daryl here with star development, as expected. Uh, this quarterback who... I would say almost guaranteed to have star, but you never know. And he is star. And then the fullback. I don't know. Something's telling me maybe superstar. I'm just saying. Oop, wrong, wrong thing. And he's not. I really want to see what his overall or his actual ratings are because we kind of skipped over it. 22-year-old rookie. He's got some speed. Some pretty good strength for a fullback. 84. Damn, that might be one of the better prospects I've seen as a fullback. Oh, and we for we forgot. We got two more things I want to look at. I want to take a look at that QB, and then me. Nah, I don't really care about that seventh round safety. Let's go look at that QB though. Where the hell was he? Oh, here he was, number thirty. Oh, only normal, but seventy-one overall. Not a bad player. I don't think he would have had a chance to start over Drew Lock at all, but still not a terrible player. You couldn't really go wrong with him. But ultimately, we definitely did make the better decision by far. We trade Glasgow in a fifth round pick for the Cardinals third round pick, which I would assume will make them quite a bit better since he is a starting caliber lineman at 29 years old. All right, so here is the roster going into the next season. We're starting care there's at left tackle. James is going to stay at right tackle. He just played too well not to. And uh, Gross, he's just going to sit as a backup for now, learning as much as he can from the two tackles. Well, one tackle, because Carruthers needs help learning himself, even though he's playing uh, potentially the, sm the the most important position on the offensive line. Uh, receivers are absolutely nuts. Can't go any further than that. Uh, we have a star backup quarterback. We have a star fullback. be nice to see Lindsey take the next step, but I don't know if that'll ever happen. And then on the defensive side of things, it's really starting to come together. Callahan is the slot corner might become the number three all-time on this team with Mathis potentially gaining the number two role after Boye leaves this season. And safeties looking to get a lot better with Leslie as a superstar, maybe getting to a 78-79 by the end of the season. Jatavis, though, backup middle linebacker, might be a, a position of uh, interest in the future. 
Surprisingly, only 6,800 XP for him to upgrade at 27 years old. I know that superstar dev is huge, which is a main reason why we did try to sign him. I don't know why the linebackers switched, but honestly, we're not getting much success there, so why not, I guess, just let it happen. And uh, some of the re-signings this season may include names like Von Miller, ironically, so... Uh, Get ready for some money to be spent is all I can really say. I told you there was going to be some re-signings and they're quite the hefty. Corlin Sutton wants a four-year deal. We're going to extend that to a five-year deal. Was Drew Locke on the list here? I didn't see him, so we're going to have a chance at the, the rookie extension. Von Miller with a two-year I think is something we have to debate on because he is regressing at a high rate. Uh, I don't want to keep Chubb in the terms of his success rate, but... We're not going to get... Okay, dude, you really have not earned that, so calm the hell down. We're not really getting the re, you know, the results out of it that we should be. Bryce Callahan wants a one-year deal worth 9 mil. I think that's exactly fair for him, so we're going to give him the one-year deal, nothing more. Uh, Chubb will have to add a little bit more money, too, apparently. I mean, he's 25, he's 85 overall. He's not really playing that well. But, like I said, what can you really do? Slightly bumped it. 500k extra per year, and he accepts. Melvin, I think, will be let go. He'll be 29. He's only a backup, and we already signed a backup anyways. Same with Royce, so we'll have to add another player. We already have a full uh, punter in place for Sam Martin, so unless he absolutely smashes it, we'll let him go as well. And then Vaughn, I think, would be a tag situation. Actually, never mind. We got him for a one-year 19 million, 19.4 mil, 11 guaranteed, 9, was it 8? No, 7.5 for the salary. And you can see here, spoiler alert, we're kind of trash. All right, final game of the season, and this is where I get disappointed as we go 6 and 10. I'm not sure how. We keep getting better as a team. I don't think any team's really competing with us in, that term, in those terms, but... We are the Denver Broncos, and that's the way Madden treats us. So here is the season from Drew Locke. A huge step down, rushing-wise, nothing much. I think, once again, we've been over this. I think the game just it just favorites certain teams. Uh, you know, EA is the way EA is at the end of the day. They don't really care for, uh, you know, who actually is good. It's about the teams. They want to keep it realistic without having to do any work at all based on looking at the team's overalls and, you know, who actually has good ratings. That You know, I would say, it wouldn't surprise me, we might actually do this as an experiment, in 80 overall with no awareness but amazing finesse and, you know, all the stats that I actually take to be a pass rusher would probably do worse than a high overall player with no pass rush. We should probably test that, like I said, but it would not surprise me in the slightest. We'll take a look at the awards right now. Willie Gay, uh, does he actually have the name? Do they allow it? Did they? Is that something new? Of course, Joey Anthony is the uh, offensive rookie of the year. Wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, you know a rebuild without something like that happening. And McManus did not win kicker of the year. Tucker was probably perfect. Let's go to the Super Bowl. Uh, we'll definitely do at least another year, maybe two, but no more than two because at this point, you know, we're just kind of running in circles here. Even though we are getting better, we're just not playing better. And the Browns win back-to-back -back Super Bowls here. Any dev ups at all? I really don't think there would be one on offense. Uh, Jerry Judy is now the number one talented wide receiver on the team, it would appear. Uh, looking at the defensive side of the ball, uh, Leslie is already an X-Factor. Nice. Leslie, defensive rookie of the year, superstar X-Factor. And uh, anyone else, Vaughn did drop down to a 88 overall, which I suppose is fine. He's still starting caliber, but... Post, post this season, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Boye will be let go. Mathis will probably become our new number two with Callahan at number three. We should be saving a little bit of money after this season too, so we might be able to make one little splash here in free agency. I'm not sure exactly who we would want, but maybe a big-name offensive lineman if there's someone there. Uh, but like we said, we'll let these three fellas go. Sam Martin will let him go, and maybe one of these backups will re-sign. So looking at this list of players, we have Jawan James, we would be able to save 10 mil with. We have Jarrell Casey that we'd be able to save 14 mil with. Those are two numbers that definitely intrigue me because if there's better in free agency at those positions, we can literally, quite literally, do a straight swap on them. Obviously, we have to get them to come here, which, honestly, if I'm a free agent, I'm not so sure about it. 
But let's take a look at who we got. We have Kenneth Murray in free agency. I'm not sure how that's even possible. Uh, unfortunately, he's asking for quite a bit of money, so I'm not really willing to do that. However, Darius Leonard here, not getting an immediate offer, so maybe we can offer a little bit less, maybe get away with it. All right, so we did get Brian Bulaga on a two-year deal, rather cheap as well. So uh, Jawan James is officially a uh, a trade bait partner he is 30 years old though so i don't think we're gonna get much out of him maybe a fifth round from a team like the bears who desperately need a tackle they can take that tag i mean if they can take the money i am cool with that of course we didn't get any dts or anything like that but still desperately looking to replace him jarrell casey that is we ended up getting uh, Dallas Goddard on a three-year 15 mil and Brockers on a two-year eight. So, yeah, see you later, Mr. Jarrell Casey. Although, I, I mean, I think Jarrell Casey is probably better than Brockers. It's not even close that the money savings are just astronomical in difference. Uh, we are going to have to uh, debate on what to do with Mr. Uh, Locke. I'm not sure there, but we'll get to it. And Jatavis, even though we are going for J Darius... We are, uh, we're fine with. We lost Boye, right? Okay, we did. Oh, yeah, we do have pick nine as well. QB could be on the horizon here. I'm not a huge fan of of what's going down these days. How the hell do we get Clyde Edwards Hilaire, by the way? I didn't even sign him. Was he just taken out of free agency? What's the story there? What's the story? Edwards Hilaire, Hilaire, Hilaire. Noah Fant wants a contract. Uh, we'll say we'll keep him around. I'm not sure what I want to do with this fifth year. I don't think so. If we're going to re-sign him, we're going to do it the right way, right out the gates. Unfortunately, it's not like it's not looking like Drew Locke's going to have a, a fifth-year option here, which is a bit freaking brutal. So week four in free agency, Darius Leonard finally decides on who he wants to join, and he joins us for a four-year, $42 million deal. I am not sure how you didn't have a bigger market, but we will gladly take that contract on as we now have the best middle linebacking group in the entire league. Oh, I also didn't even, I don't know why I just didn't notice, but Marshawn Lattimore did actually go up to Superstar. That's a huge one. Oh, pick artist would be disgustingly bad. But luckily for us, traits don't matter for this. Uh, Fant will still, still stay the starter. I mean, this team is good. I don't really know what else he can do to make it better, honestly. But I will say there are a ton, and I mean a ton, of linebackers. There is also a QB that looks halfway decent. But if you compare him to the other guy, he's not crazy much better. And the other guy was only normal. I know probably now after winning off as a rookie of the year, he's superstar. Or star, anyways. But I don't know if it's worth it. I think... Uh Wait, why did it say Denver was number one? I was about to say we're not number one. Dre Miller left tackle. There's a bunch of uh, line uh, pass rushing linebackers, which I think we should look at to replace Von Miller after this season. Uh, but if the QB's there, I don't know. There's one of them. I don't know if we can pass on him. And uh, wow, okay, so somehow, some way, like pretty much all of the players are there except for one. I really don't know what to do. We end up getting 15 and 47 for nine with uh, some of our backups that we're going to let go. And in doing so, the Vikings trade up for the best quarterback. So, super steal on their part. And uh, I think both of our guys are still there. Florence was one of our tackles, in fairness. Royal was our middle. And I suppose with our pick here, somehow Windsor is still there. But we're going to go for the more athletic Dean Pollard. Please be hidden. And he is supposed to go 11 in true talent. We took him at 15. Boy, does this guy look like a pretty damn, about as good as you're going to get Von Miller replacement. So we finally get rid of Worley's contract. We give, give them 96 and 41 for pick 25. And I think we're going to add something else. What should we add? Let's add a fifth and a sixth, which I think makes this trade pretty fair. Maybe a little high to replace to use on a lineman we're not going to be able to use until several seasons from now but here we are our next pick is well maybe we got garrison lee here but i don't really know if we can replace a uh a running back like Lindsay when we're paying him hassan casey uh the top skills do look pretty good and he's young and he's a true tackle at six foot eight please 
And we land another really good player, 21 years old, hidden. Yeah, this guy can sit for a while. May I mean, he is pretty fast. Maybe we can start him a guard somewhere. I don't know. Uh, but I'm f perfectly happy with that pick. 15, maybe if the running back's there, we'll take a, you know, we'll, we'll think about it. Yeah, screw it, we'll take him. I almost never take running backs anyways. He is hidden. 74 overall. We might have gotten lucky. You never know. Could be like an X-Factor, Superstar, or an X-Factor. Uh, you know, the stamina and injury and toughness is a little rough, but great receiving stats. Pretty decently fast. Uh, you know, speed's a little bit lower, but Excel and Agility are great. Uh, I mean, that's not a bad pick. I guess with a 6 this. There we go. So we do get to 65. You know, no risks. We've been, you know, going for who we want. We're not going to wait. We're not going to say, oh, best available, whatever. Richard Reyes, who we want. Maybe start somewhere. I don't know. We're going to take him. And this is why you trade up. Holy crap. Obviously, in a user league, this guy doesn't fall outside, like, the top 30 picks, probably, depending on what everyone needs. But this guy has a lot of potential. That strength is a little low, but he is very fast. 291. Finesse style. Very interesting player. Not really sure what our lineman situation is. I don't think there's... I guess to be fair, we got Brockers. So that guy could kind of compete with Brockers for snaps, honestly. So our next picks are in the 6th and 7th rounds. So I think we can definitely trade this pick for next year and then start taking players. We had a 5th this and we get a 3rd next from the Texans. Mike Barr, maybe even a corner in the future. I don't know. We're just going to keep taking good talent. Uh, normal development, but 70 overall. You can't be mad with that pick at all. Like I said, maybe a corner. I'm not sure. 21, 6 foot 1. That's a really good pick. Jeffrey Andrews, mid 7th. The combine looks great. The skills look decent. He is normal development, but a pretty damn good pick. So we're going to trade down the rest of our picks and be happy with our draft. I mean, I felt like we had a pretty good one. I don't know about you guys. All right, let's take a look at these developments. Mr. Dean Pollard, we're hoping for superstar or better, and we get. Superstar or better. I don't like the number 51 too much, so we'll have to work with that. But another first-round player, Hassan Casey. Hidden development. Can't go wrong with that at all. And a star development player. Maybe he fits as a starter, though. You never know. Uh, Garrison Lee, another hidden, please. We might have a, a competition here if he's better than star. He's only star. But so far, of all the players, this is, you know, this is the situation I want. Richard Reyes, once again, maybe fight with... Uh, Rockers for some starting numbers and minutes and start development. It's it's fine. It's not bad. Uh, and I think these guys are both star, right? Let's take a look at that QB now. If he's superstar or better, we might have made the wrong decision. Uh, hidden. Okay, that's not a good start for us. Uh, very accurate. 21 years old as well. His Please be star for the love of G. <laughs> no. At least he was an X Factor, but... Yeah, that kind of... Oh, my. No, 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 no. 24. Oh, that's disgusting. I am sickened. Oh, look at this. Look at this. No. Don't. Please. It hurts my eyes. Okay, at least with Orlando Sand uh, Saunders here, they... You know, they, it's something, right? What's that development? Please be an X-Factor just to make him feel good. Super... Okay, that's a decent pick. It, that is a, a big... Big, you know, sliver win there. Barely got out of that one. We trade the Bills, Reisner, and a 6 next year for a 78 this and a 5th next. Obviously, we don't know what those actual projections look like, but Reisner, 27. He's allowed 20-plus sacks in his three-year career. He's not a bad overall. He does have time to develop still. It's just, I think, the time is now for some of these players. So, ooh, I did not think about the height uh, Carruthers, who, how, how good was he at tackle? 15 sacks. I mean, I don't think there's much of an argument that he did not play well. So, Mr. Carruthers is going to be playing left guard. Carruthers, super athletic, goes to left guard. And then the giant six foot eight monster plays left tackle. I think this is an improvement on the offensive line for sure. We got more future worthiness. And we don't have to pay Dalton Reiser, you know, potentially 8 to 10 mil per year. Uh, like the Bills might have to, but obviously he's an automatic starter for them, whereas we actually do have some options here. Receivers haven't changed, and there's really no reason for that to change because our guys are great. I don't know why Edwards Hilaire is here. It just doesn't make sense that he would even be on a team other than the Chiefs at this point, so we're going to give him back just to make things right. 
So we had some re-signings, guys like Jerry Judy asking for quite a bit of money. We're going to give him a seven-year, $106 million deal. Simply put, <laughs> nothing nothing crazy, just that. Uh, Drew Locke wants a six-year, 183. Absolutely zero chance he gets that before we play this season out. And then Noah Fan will give him a five-year, 30, which I think is completely fair with his kind of lack of success. Uh, Cushionberry, uh, we'll get, I mean, a two-year, we'll give him like a three. I'll give a four-year. I mean, it's pretty cheap money. Okay, overall. And then... Muti, Mutai, I always, you know, for a, somebody that I like to draft in our uh, our draft, real life draft rebuilds we were doing, you thought I would learn his name? Nah, I just said uh, I never did. Uh, Alberto was a two year deal, perfectly fine. I think that makes sense as a backup. And I don't know if we owe anyone else in money. Tyree Cleveland, maybe. Uh, I suppose we'll look at Vaughn. Nah, I think I think Vaughn might. Honestly, just retire, and even if he doesn't, I think our backup's going to be pretty primed to go. Bobby Brown finally gets a dev up. This is his third opportunity. He finally succeeds, but hey, better late than never. Superstar dev now. Final game. Are we going to be in the playoffs? We are, and we get a home game. What a close division. The Chiefs, I don't understand how they always fall apart, but I am completely fine with that. Drew Locke, yeah, um... I don't know what the hell to do with this guy. This seems like a tag situation. 4,000 yards, just under it anyways. 30 touchdowns, 8 picks. Rushing. Nobody really played well, man. The ground game struggles some. Receiving, nobody's really... I mean, Hamler's doing better now, but Sutton did way worse. Sutton was, like, very consistent at first, and then last two seasons have been terrible. Uh, offensive line, Bulaga didn't play well. Casey played pretty damn well, I will say. Interior wasn't great outside of... Uh, uh, you know the guy. <laughs> Chubb, 10 and a half sacks. Bobby Brown, the new superstar. DT, 8.5. Vaughn with 8.5. Reyes with 3.5. Chubb, where was Chubb? Oh, yeah, Chubb was number one. Never mind. I was about to say, Chubb, did you really just suck again? Lattimore with six picks, though. McManus, I'm glad we gave him that extra chance because he really has showed up. Over the last two seasons, I think he's missed a, comp uh, a combined two kicks, which is pretty impressive. Any award wins at all. Let's see if Drew Locke was on the list. I highly doubt it. He was not. Uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Garrison Lee, the backup running back, apparently. Uh, Cam Noon on the Patriots. Any other award wins? I highly doubt it. Uh, wow, Lattimore was number two. I thought six picks, almost 100 tackles would have won it. McManus with uh, a dev up. We probably should be remembering to dev up every winner of the Kicker of the Year award, but... I don't really care too much. I don't know if you guys do. We're going to dev up McManus, though, and uh, hopefully that'll extend his career quite a bit. The beautiful superstar development kicker is, uh, has just been achieved. Uh, his, de his XP is 10,000 less for each upgrade. Not that it matters to us. Just worried more about that longevity. And uh, 86 overall going against the Jets. The last time we played the Jets, we uh, may or may not have lost that game. We're an 87 overall now, and there is a very realistic chance that we could win all the way. 87 overall is pretty good. Uh, you know, across the board, I think there would only be a few teams higher overall than us, so maybe we'll get that lucky, undeserved win. But obviously, we do have to win this one first, which... Honestly, I can't say we're too, I'm too confident, at least. I don't know about you guys. All right, going to the end of the game. Uh, looks like defense made a great stop. We get seven. However, you can see right now, it's not looking super great in our favor. Okay, 14 to three. Maybe, maybe so. Defense holds them to three. That's all you got to do. Hold them to three each time, and hopefully the offense can do enough. 21 to six, 21 to nine. Fourth quarter is kind of opening up for them, but offense has done just enough. 28 to 23. Damn, can we uh, win a little bit better next time? Drew Locke did play outstandingly well, though, and uh, running game, once again, just utter garbage. I don't know what to tell you. Lindsey just apparently was never the guy, but we locked him into that five-year deal. We uh, we know for the future now. I think this team just needs a bruiser, honestly. They just need a power back to just get them those hard yards to gain those third and two, third and three situations. Right, going against the Bills now, they're an 87 overall as well. I'm not really sure how, but apparently they are. Hopefully we can show them that we're the better 87 overall. Kind of, right? 
Once again, Cleveland, are they going to go for the, the three-peat? Is it going to be the three-peat for Cleveland? Let's find out. I mean, I don't care as long as we face them in the next round. That's that's my dream here. Uh, really good drive there. We missed the extra point. McManus, come on. We gave you tons of praise. You just won kicker of the year. We don't need missing of the extra points. Uh, we're down by seven, which we wouldn't be, and that is going to be the dagger. Driving all the way down and not getting points. I don't know if we missed the field goal. What's the story? Do you get the touchdown? We're down by three. Defense does make the stop. If offense can drive down for a TD, third and 12, they're going to go for the field goal, right? Okay, they are. A minute and a half left. Defense is not going to be able to hold, are they? What's the situation? Third and three. Wow. We're just going to go with the game says. I just want to watch. Nickel Blitz. Um. Okay. I don't, I'm going to just use Reyes because he's the worst player on the D-line. And that is going to be a game-winning play by the Bills. You can have all the yards you want, buddy, but one touchdown, two picks is not going to cut it. What a rough situation. I think we'll play one final season, and I'm calling it there. I mean, look at these rushing numbers, dude. One point, I don't understand what is wrong with Sim. I don't get it. There should be, it's literally actually impossible to average as little of yards per play as we do on a, on a daily basis, on a game-to-game -game basis. It's, it's impossible. It is literally impossible. Okay, maybe it's not impossible, but the Jets and Dolphins average 3.3 yards per carry with the uh, next lowest being the Steelers and Bears at 3.7. But that is team rushing, which might factor in QB rushes, uh, you know, running back, running plays of the fullback, backup rushes. Philip Lindsay has averaged very, very bad numbers, 3.4, 3.4, 3.5, and 3.7. So far in Lindsay's two seasons, he has averaged 5.4 and 4.5 in real life. So EA just hates teams that aren't the, the traditional big-name teams as of late, I suppose. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. I changed the schemes twice now. And there really hasn't been a crazy increase in either of those seasons for rushing numbers. And Drew Locke has been pretty much the same outside of that first year. So I have no idea what to do. Let's take a look at the dev ups. Will uh, anything change? Drew Locke's still the same dev uh, running game. I mean, Lee might be the front runner. I'm just honestly, if we can release Lindsay, which we can't, great. Uh, I'm done with him. If we can get maybe even a new guy at number one, whatever it takes, Lindsey can't be the number one again because he's just terrible. And unfortunately, we see Bulaga retire on us, which I was not expecting, which is very unfortunate. Uh, something looks like we have more dead. No, it's Pollard. Really? Von Miller has not regressed that hard? Oh, my. What's his ability? He's still really good, even though he didn't play well. What is Pollard's... Uh overall here uh we'll see how much it's going to cost to get vaughn but right now i wouldn't mind pollard starting we'll just see what the best case scenario is for us but once again we have a great team and the game's just being the game to us at this point drew lock once again zero chance we pay him that money i'd be willing to pay him you know a fair deal instead of having to actually tag him give him a one year 35 but apparently not We'll give him the one year 37, apparently. But once again, I'm fine with that. Bryce Callahan, I'm going to let him hit free agency. McManus, I will give him a three year deal as earned. Uh, he's uh, happy to join. Uh, Von Miller needs a one year 10 only, but let's be honest, no matter what I give him here, he's hitting free agency. One year 13.3. And like we said, it was going to happen no matter what. But. We did need to save that money, so I'm not super mad. Let's see if there's anyone we can actually save more money with. I doubt that's going to be the case. But yeah, regardless of what happens this season, this is the final year 100%. And now we're just getting expensive because uh, our youngsters are needing contracts and we're not really replacing those. We can get rid of Jatavis, which I think is a decision we have to do. And then everything else. Yeah, we're going to have some issues with some re-signing soon. All right, Kenneth Murray in free agency asking for her, what of seven-year, one hundred and seventy-seven million dollar deal? To compare that to Devin White, who is basically the same position, that is like triple what he's asking. EA, please do something about this. Something at all. 
Pharrell, I don't even know. We're going to try to get to it for a year. All right, so we have a quarterback at the number one spot. Uh, not Kai Leverett because he's a fourth-round projected talent. This guy is by far the best. I didn't look anything past the top two rounds because it's very unlikely to see someone else there. Maybe I should have looked at that guy, but... It's very unlikely out of the first two rounds outside of that you're going to find anyone. So I'm going to trade. Well, we're going to move down to 10. And if the quarterback's still there, we'll give it a good thought. But if not, it is what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, Locke has got the overall. He just isn't playing well. Uh, the Buccaneers would likely make a play. Can we get to the Ravens? That's the question. And by Ravens, I mean Texans, obviously. The thing is, to actually get up for that QB, we'd have to give up pretty much our entire draft, so we're just not going to do that. I'd imagine the Eagles or the Patriots will end up taking the guy, though. Do none of those teams need a QB? Mosley goes high, man. Now, this changes quite a bit because 16 is dramatically less than 10. We can get away with giving them our second-round pick. Or not your second-round pick, our third-round pick. Two third round picks and, a, and our first round pick here to move up to 17. Of course, in game, they're going to say it's close, which is fine because it is close. Jatavis Brown. Actually, Jatavis is a decent piece of his own. So we're going to trade a fourth instead. And we're going to keep that third. I think that's that's pretty fair. Oops. And I suppose we're going to take the quarterback. I have no idea what we're going to do with him, but I think... It's about time we take a guy that can hopefully bring us somewhere. Uh, we do have a DT, Keyshawn Calvin. We do have Reggie Drummond. Uh, what else do we have? Deshaun Johnson, close to Deshaun Jackson, 6'2". He is 23, though. Could get, use a guy to replace Hamler, but eh, we could just go to free agency for that. Late third here, which is where we would take the, the second-round pick. Um... Yeah, I guess Hoover it is. Theodore Hoover. Hidden development. Supposed to go 18. We took him 16. Uh, he looks pretty damn solid, to be fair. So, I, I guess it's a good pick. I don't think he'll start. But maybe... And speaking of maybe, if Drummond is there at pick one, we might try to make a move to pick one. Drummond is there. I think he's definitely worth the trade-up. So, uh, with these two guys on the top of our list right now... Let's see what we can do. So we end up giving the uh, the Steelers our 74, our 96, this, and a third and a fourth next year for pick 33, which just about equals out to that. I believe it actually gives them a little bit over us. Reggie Drummond, hoping for, hoping for the best indeed. Hidden developments, our new number three cornerback right out of the gate. Unless he has superstar, he'll move up to number two, but... For right now, number three corner. We're pretty much set there at cornerback now. Uh, and then here we have one final pick. It would appear uh, Angelo Cochran, the 21 years old. He says agile. We don't know the combine grade, but could potentially play inside or out. So can't go any further than that. And 76 overall. Okay, maybe not as... I mean, he is a, he's agile. He's just not very fast. Good excel, good agility. Still okay as a guard, I suppose, but... Yeah, not, uh, not the guy I thought he was going to be drafting, but obviously still really good, just not agile. And then I suppose our next pick would be, ooh, he's 24? Where the hell did I even put him on my list? Joey Casey, early fifth. If he's there, start of the fourth, maybe we make a trade up, but I don't know. We trade him fifth this, sixth this, and a fifth next. We're going to add another fifth next if we have one, which I believe we do. And that should equal out to pick 98. Leave it to the Vikings to add way more later round picks yet again. All right, Joey Casey, be worth the pick. He is a 68 overall normal, and I suppose he's got a future. He's 22. He's It's not a bad pick. All right, so let's take a quick look at all the developments of our players. Hoover, what's the dev looking like, buddy? Superstar. Okay, so we landed a great player. I don't think he's going to start over Drew Locke right away, but depending on how Drew Locke plays, I think there's a decent chance uh, Hoover is the starting quarterback come up coming next year. Uh, Angelo Cochran is star development. It's very weird to go over a QB when you have a great guy in place. There's also some random guy we took for depth. He was meh. But it's weird to take a guy when you already have a number one guy like Locke, but... 
I mean, we haven't gotten there, and I don't I don't know what else to think of. This team is great. He's not really playing super well for, what, an 88 overall? I mean, I don't know. I can't really think of anything else. I, I don't know. We have some uh, re-signings. You see Drew Locke's number has dropped dramatically. Micah Parsons is obviously a, a future beast with this team already showing up nicely. Bobby Brown, similar, uh, you know, same situation, six-year deal. Uh, he's played pretty damn well. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit better consistency, but still. Uh, Damari Mathis, he's 25. I'd really like that to be a three-year. Uh, Brady Breeze, we really should have traded him. Neil Farrell, I'm going to give him a three-year deal because I don't know, you know, the situation going forward. He's good. He just hasn't really shown to be a true good starter. We have the money for Drew Locke, so... You know, if he does play well, we'll just have a really good backup, similar to what might happen to the Packers, but obviously Drew Locke's quite a bit younger, 10 years to be exactly. But, yeah, 6-year 155, it's cheaper. So if he actually plays up to it, it was okay to wait the long haul, I guess. Actually, maybe it isn't cheaper. Was the other one 7-year? Maybe it's not cheaper. I don't know. All right, heads to the playoffs. Uh, let's see if Drew Locke uh, can hold on to his job or not. He... Might be able to. I will say there was a massive amount of losses right near the end there because we were like 9-3 and three at one point, I believe. So we must have lost a lot at the end. Three straight, to be exact. I love it. Chiefs still struggling. Uh, whereas the Raiders... Raiders uh, did pretty damn well. Well, not pretty damn well at all, actually, to be fair. But they finished strong, I suppose. Uh, let's take a look at these Drew Locke numbers that are, of course... Starter-like worthy, 40 touchdowns, 8 picks, 3,800 yards. You gotta love it. Garrison Lee was the starter. He did play better. It's just apparently Phillip got more carries. I don't know. Garrison Lee looks like he's ready to start for this team. So, I mean, coming up next season, which we won't see because I'm done after this, whether we make the play the Super Bowl and lose or win it all, probably is ready to go. But, you know, once again, we won't see it. McMahon has got the two-year deal. Missed 4 out of 18. Not super happy with it, but... We aren't locked in forever, so it's fine. Any award wins. Uh, Drummond wins cornerback or defensive rookie of the year. Of course, Locke is the second best QB, which probably puts him at superstar development. Gotta love when stuff like that happens. And here we are going against the Steelers, who go from the number one overall pick to, you know, at least bottom 12, which is pretty impressive. We're an 89 overall. They're an 83. Let's win this game. I've been recording for over four and a half hours, so... If you guys did like this one, whether we make it to the Super Bowl or not, leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you're new. We do a lot of rebuilds, two a week. Uh, think about doing like a fantasy, some sort of special fantasy draft or something, some fantasy rebuild on Sunday. Enough talking, though, because right now it's not looking good for us. we got about two and a half minutes left to save this rebuild, and the offense is not cooperating. We've missed four straight passes, kind of, maybe even worse. Inside, you have Hamler. J. Judy, do you believe in the blocking? That's the question. And you don't. Nice. Love it. That is likely going to be the rebuild, but we'll see. You know, they can make the stop, drive down the field. Not looking good so far, I'll put it that way. Second and six, turn into a third and two. Going to go with the goal line look. Obviously, a run would be pretty obvious. A pass would be pretty stupid. And that's exactly what they do. And, of course, they convert because, you know, why would you why would you run like a, every other team in the history of running? I don't know how many times you've been burned by that. Uh, yeah, sure, man. If it wasn't the freaking Steelers, I would actually leave and then just test out Sim. But at the end of the day, it's, it's Madden. It doesn't matter how good we made our team. It's just going to happen no matter what. So it doesn't really matter. This was a great rebuild for success in the roster terms, building the roster and whatnot. But... When it comes to simming, it just never worked out. The, the EA is just stuck in their lazy ways. Make the top teams, the predictable teams, good in sim, and then that's pretty much it. You know, the Browns, they constantly win. I get it. They did have a pretty good roster on paper, but the Browns are constantly winning the Super Bowl because that's what every team, everyone thought coming in that the Browns, they, they had the best roster coming in. They were going to be godly, and they did really poorly in regular season. Yet here they are, constantly winning Super Bowls. It wouldn't even surprise me if they're in the Super Bowl here. It's not. It's the Jets, because the Jets and Giants deserve to be here. The winner of that will be the Giants by three. Good Super Bowl, I suppose. 
Uh, Drew Locke most likely. Nope, not even Superstar. Wow. Nice. Any other players go up in dev? Uh, Mathis went up in dev. So, I mean, this team, I, I don't know what else we could have done. We did so well with this team, and I guess we didn't do enough. Somehow we were supposed to draft even better. We had another just about near-perfect draft uh, scenario situation all the way across the board. I don't think we had a single bad draft, and that's about it. The offensive line was is decent. I mean, this is probably a pretty average line, maybe even better than average line across the league. And I guess it just wasn't meant to be. I suppose this will be one of those prime candidates for a potential reload in the future. But regardless, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, like I said, you know, do the things, the like and whatever. Uh, maybe follow me on Twitter, Jerome PK. That'd be a nice thing to do. Uh, maybe subscribe to my second channel, PK Air Plays. We do a lot of fun stuff over there. A little bit more off the rails at times. Of course, Animal Crossing's been kind of chill. But we still have the jokes flying here and there. And that's about it. Hopefully you guys did uh, enjoy, like I said. Hopefully you come back for next video, though. But until next video, see ya!